Maybe okay. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, experts and colleagues. Excellencies, Excellence, distinguished, distinguished delegates. delegates. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, we will wait for perhaps one more minute. We start the session just for get everyone to settle down.
Once again, good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for taking time to join. Uh, I know the IGF is always uh, very exciting because there are so many sessions to choose from. Uh, we have 300 over sessions as part of DESA. Uh, I do know that it is a very intense week for, for you. So thank you for, for, for making the choice to spend your uh, precious time with us here. So today's um, session, uh, this is actually an open forum organized by UN DESA, uh, focusing on national data governance uh, framework. Um, Dennis, I'm not sure whether if, are you able to share the screen? Yeah. Uh, I will run through the program very briefly. And I really like to invite uh, for active participation. Ex ex we do have a line of distinguished delegates. For Okay, let me start that once again. So, uh, welcome to this open forum. It's on uh, focusing on adopting data governance framework, moving from silos to an ecosystem approach. This is uh, part of the initiative of UN DESA, Department of Economic and Social Affairs. We are supporting countries in Africa, in Asia Pacific, especially the developing countries, in putting together an integrated holistic national data governance framework. Um, but we do realize that the data governance framework in today's context has also to be multi-stakeholder and has also to relate to uh, global data governance. So we are very glad to have participants here, both on-site and online, to sh be here and to share with us your, in your insights. Um, we have a few guiding questions. Um, I hope you can look at uh, our information on the event page in IGF website. There you can see the guiding questions, which I will not take time to, to, uh, to repeat here. You can also look at the bios of our speakers, so we do not have to spend too much time in introducing the speakers. So perhaps, again, speaking of time, I will not take more time to elaborate, but to invite our, okay, that, yeah, we have the, we have the uh, guiding questions here that I can just go through very quickly. Um, the centrality of data developments, and all of you will agree, and you have heard that data is the new gold, the new oil, the new currency for the, the digital economy. How governments can actually look at ex employing ex a ex 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 in, 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 in implementing integrated national data governance for the UN, the UN Department, Department of Economic and Social Affairs. I express, I express our, our deep appreciation, appreciation to, you to you for joining, for joining this open this forum. forum. Can we adapting for national, data national data governance, governance, governance framework from silos, from silos can we pause the to video for a moment and the, the, our technical colleague that is, that is the is the life life of most most, most if not all, not all institutions. institutions that, that, that is, increasing is increasing more than more than ex public, public, public. okay my my apologies uh yeah we have to sort out the technical. Just, just give me the cue. One more minute, we will play the video. One more minute. So, the, also in relating to national data governance framework, how that is uh, to be related to global data governance and a multi-stakeholder approach. That's why we are here today uh, at the Internet Governance Forum to, to discuss these uh, very uh, pertinent issues. Um, and with that, let us uh, start with our opening session. Uh, we have a few speakers starting with uh, Mr. Zhuang Zhu, the Director of the Division for Public Institutions and Digital Governments, UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. So yes, if can you play the recorded video of Mr. Zhu, please. Excellencies, distinguished, distinguished delegates, delegates experts, experts and colleagues, and colleagues. On behalf, on behalf of the UN, of the UN Department, Department of Economic, Economic and Social, and Social Affairs, Affairs, I express, I express our, our deep appreciation, appreciation to, you to you for joining, for joining this open this forum, forum on adapting, adapting national, national data governance, data governance framework, framework from silos, from silos to ecosystem. To ecosystem. That, uh, that is the, is the life, life of most, 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 if not all, not all institutions. institutions. Data, data is, increasing is increasing more than, more than exponentially, exponentially, with more, with more being, stored being stored in the cloud, in the cloud than, ever. than ever. There's also, There's also a, general a general perception, perception that, we are, that we are overwhelmed with data, with data and, information and information overload. 
but they are but also, they are also un- unmet data demands in the data, in the data gaps. gaps. Especially, especially for the vulnerable, for the vulnerable can't community. Can't hear anything anymore? Is it uh, just me? Or? Where, where there's, data, there's data, there will, there will be, be cyber threats. Cyber threats. Institutions, institutions with, with valuable, valuable personal, personal data, data, such as financial, financial and medical, and medical information, information, will make, will them, make them particularly, particularly vulnerable, vulnerable targets. targets. That, security that security breach is more, is more rampant, rampant than ever. Than ever. That is, that is why we need, we need a, comprehensive a comprehensive framework, framework approach, approach to, data, to management data management and the data, and the data governance, governance in, building in building national, national data, data ecosystem, ecosystem across, across government, government agencies, agencies and the jurisdictions. It is, it is in this, in this context, context that we are that gathered, we are gathered here, today here today at this, at open, this open forum. forum. It is also, it is also the, same the same rationale, rationale that you and you and Tessa is implementing, is implementing a capacity, a capacity development, development project, project funded, funded by the UN, by the UN Peace and the Development, development Fund, fund on, developing on developing institutional, institutional capacities, capacities for digital, for digital data, data management and cooperation, and cooperation to advance, to advance progress, progress towards, towards a sustainable, sustainable development, development goals. goals. We aim, we aim to, support to support developing, developing countries. countries in Africa, in Africa and, and the Pacific, Pacific, Asia, Pacific, Asia Pacific to enhance, to enhance institutional, institutional capacities, capacities in, planning in planning and implementing, and implementing national, national data governance, data governance framework. framework. At this, At open, this forum, open forum, I very much, I very look, much forward look forward to your, to your expert, expert advice, advice and the different, and the different perspectives, perspectives on the following. On the following. Is, is a framework, a framework approach, approach to, to national, national data governance, data governance useful? useful? Given the Given centrality, centrality of data for data development, how can, how we, can advance we advance a holistic, holistic whole, of, whole government of government and whole, and of, whole society, of society multi-stakeholder approach? approach? And what, and are, what the are the interlinkages, interlinkages between, between national, national data, data, data governance and the global, and the global data, data, data governance, for example, for example in, in cross-border cross border border data, data flows? Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen I would like, I would to, like to End my, End short, my remarks short remarks to reiterate, to reiterate the, following. the following. An effective, An effective national, national data, data governance framework, framework is no is longer, longer optional, optional but, but critical. critical. Not only, Not only is, there is there a need for data, for data classifications, classifications and, standards and standards to facilitate, to facilitate data, use, data use, reuse, reuse sharing, sharing and exchange, and exchange but there, are, but there also are also urgent needs, urgent needs to, inform to inform data risk, data risk and, security and security management, legal, legal and the regulatory, and regulatory compliance, compliance process, process and help, and help improve, improve productivity, productivity as well as, as, well as accountability, accountability in decision, in decision making, making while respecting, respecting personal, personal data, data privacy. With your, With your engagement, engagement and advice, and advice today, today we hope we to hope better, to frame better frame the current the current challenges, challenges and, opportunities and opportunities to advance, to advance and, tap, and tap on the vast, on the vast potential, potential of digital, of digital data. data. I wish I all, wish all an engaging, engaging and fruitful, and fruitful discussion. Fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. So now let's. Uh, we will get the honor to listen to our next speaker. Um, is uh, Excellency State Minister Huria Ali. Um, not, I, I first I must as, again express thanks. We said it many times, but not enough thanks to our host, um, the government of Ethiopia. But also very glad that uh, Excellency can actually join us uh, for this session because we are uh, we are collaborating with the government through the Ministry of Innovation and Technology on this very subject on uh, data national data governance framework. Um, Excellency, please you have the floor. Thank you so much. <coughs> This one didn't work. Dear, dear participants of this forum, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. I hope you have participated meaningfully in all of the discussions, debates, dialogues on the internet governance so far. As you all are well aware, the world is witnessing the rapid of growth of technology and data. However, it also entails a multitude of risks and limitations. Issues related to the digital divide, security and privacy, combined with inadequate digital and digital literacy, have become area of concerns for many. This has been witnessed in several uh, areas and across 
different institutions and levels of government here in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, the importance of data and data governance challenges and development has grown with respect to the delivery of public services, academia, research, and real-world applicability and acceptance. Today, much of government operational activities is, is data-driven and data-centric, and many government institutions would struggle to carry out their mandates effectively without adequate and high quality data. The necessity for efficient data management and data governance in Ethiopia has taken on a new urgency in light of the exponential growth in government data as well as growing awareness of its immersed potential and associated challenges. In light of this, the Ethiopian government and the, U the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs initiated a project a few months ago that will enable us to, to devise as effective national data governance framework in Ethiopia while engaging the various government and non-government stakeholders. Dear participants, in a bid to accomplish this, a baseline study has been conducted and a workshop with all pertinent stakeholders was held a few weeks earlier. Through this process, we have realized data governance is essential because it gives an organization data meaning. It fosters confidence and understanding in an organization data through uh, <clears throat> and a true business glossary, accelerating data transformation across the broad. We have also been advised to take short-term actions in a systematic manner while being guided by a long-term vision of an integrated framework that includes policy issues. Additionally, we have learned how crucial coordination is between pertinent governmental entities across sectors and ministries, as well as across different levels of government. Dear participants of this forum, we are aware that the data governance at the national level lags somewhat in terms of policy and process. However, the Ethiopian government and my ministry committed to setting in place an effective data governance framework using systematic approach. Our strategy will include a long-term vision that will be integrated into our first ever digital transformation strategy implementation plan as well as I mentioned earlier, a short-term action that will identify low-hanging <coughs> fruits and quick wins. On the other hand, such a crucial endeavor necessities a concrete response from stakeholders and development partners. To that end, I would like to request the UN DESA keep supporting this crucial national project up until the national data governance framework for Ethiopia is put in place. I further encourage the panelists and participants of this forum to provide additional insights regarding the national data governance. Thank you so much. Thank you, Excellency, uh, for sharing very, this very uh, important and significant advancement of national data governance in Ethiopia. Next, I'd like to invite uh, our guest online. Uh, he's the Secretary of State, Ministry of Post and Telecom Com Telecommunications at the Government of Cambodia. Um, Excellency, Mr. Sok, please, you have the floor. If you are ready, please share. Yes, we can see you here, sir. Go ahead, please. Uh, we cannot hear you. Hello? Can you uh, yes. hear me? Yes, sir. Yep, we hear you now. Go ahead, please, Excellency. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, His Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you to uh, UNDESA for uh, coordinating such a, a, a big and uh, important event. I apologize that I cannot be uh, at the event uh, in person, 
uh, but thanks to technology, I am able to participate uh, at uh, this important panel. Um, I, uh, due to time, I, I can um, uh, uh, give you a little bit of uh, what's happening uh, in Cambodia. Um, uh, the government of Cambodia has been uh, pushing very strongly on digital transformation. Um, our prime minister has uh, set a goal uh, to uh, now make Cambodia um, a high income country by 2050. And uh, recently, Cambodia has uh, graduated uh, uh, to join a middle income uh, uh, country. Uh, so this is an important milestone for Cambodia. And we understand that uh, going forward to achieve uh, our prime minister's vision, uh, we have to embrace uh, technology. As you uh, recently, our government has established a national council for digital uh, economy and digital uh, society. We understand that uh, for Cambodia to uh, achieve a uh, high income country in the future, and it's, just, it's not just for uh, improving people's income, but also uh, the quality of life, we have to embrace uh, technology. So to become uh, and, and to transform our economy into a digital economy and to become a digital economy, uh, our government also has to uh, transform itself to a digital uh, government. Um, and currently uh, under the council, which is chaired by our prime minister, uh, we have uh, three uh, national committee, uh, committee of national uh, digital government. Uh, Committee of Digital Economy and Business and, uh, uh, and uh, Digital uh, Security Committee. And um, so far, I think uh, our ministry has been uh, coordinating uh, with uh, to support Digital Government uh, Committee. And we have uh, established uh, Digital uh, Government uh, Policy and Master Plan under uh, the guidance of Digital Economy and uh, Digital um, society uh, framework. Uh, as in this important event, I understand that we have uh, have discussed about digital government framework, uh, moving from silo to uh, ecosystem approach. I'm very happy uh, that uh, our team and our um, um, government are able to participate in this event and learn more about what's happening at the global level. Uh, in Cambodia, we understand that connectivity uh, within the country and uh, following the directions and standards at the regional and uh, international level is important because at the end, uh, all the digital transformation is uh, to improve uh, the quality of life and also uh, improve uh, collaboration uh, with Cambodia in the region, Cambodia uh, to the international stage. Um, So I'm very happy that uh, uh, we're able to uh, participate uh, in this important event. And I hope that uh, through this event, we could uh, have uh, further collaboration on how uh, Cambodia uh, can join uh, on, at the international level uh, and also uh, uh, be able to support uh, what we're doing here in the country and also align our strategy, our policy, uh, and our standard uh, to um, uh, support uh, what's happening at the international level uh, as well. And uh, I hope uh, uh, through the uh, following discussions uh, with our team and with the team from UNDESA and uh, all the uh, other uh, government and country support, uh, we hope that uh, the future uh, in developing uh, you know, digital society for Cambodia as we have uh, studied um, uh, many a uh, number of uh, very uh, successful country in uh, doing tr digital transformation uh, we hope that um, yeah cambodia will be able to establish a strong digital government to support a strong uh, digital economy uh, in cambodia and hopefully uh, build a type of digital society uh, that will be uh, you know, uh, um, uh, so, uh, that would be supportive of of our vision, and most importantly, of uh, supporting the future generation of Cambodia, and hopefully, uh, contributing to uh, solve all the ma major challenges uh, globally. 
Uh, so with that, I, I, I'd like to thank you, uh, you and Dessa, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on uh, this uh, on this panel, uh, on this event, and I look forward to further uh, discussions on uh, uh, in the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Chris, uh, uh, for sharing the perspective uh, of a country from another continent in the Asia Pacific. Um, that is also where we are looking forward to uh, the, uh, where the Indian Governance Forum will be next uh, be hosted by uh, Japan in Asia Pacific. Um, the next speaker is also online. Uh, uh, he's actually Professor Meng Qingguo uh, from the School of Public Policy and Management of Tsinghua University. Um, he's connecting online to, at Beijing. Uh, Professor, you have the floor, please. Uh, we cannot hear you, Professor. Can you can you say can you can you say something? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead, please. You have, you have five minutes. Go ahead, sir. We 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 could hear you earlier, but not now. Just now, I did hear you hear your voice, but not now. Can you please go ahead, sir? Um, I believe you could be muted. You are, you are, yeah, you have unmute yourself on the bottom left. <coughs> bottom left to unmute yourself. Yeah, on the bottom left, you. There's the screen share. Yeah. Professor Ming, are you able to come back online? Yes. Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. good. We hear you. Go ahead, please. You have five minutes. Go ahead, please. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please, please go ahead with your remarks. Okay, guys. No, your, your audio is not consistent. Uh, professor, you we I hear you, then we lost you. <laughs> yeah, um, Professor, we there's some technical issue. Let us see whether we can sort out uh, offline. So, uh, if you may, if I may, I will come back to you later. I'm sorry, I I. I... I hear you just now. Can you go ahead and you conti can continue to give your remarks? Okay, let's let's uh, proceed. Is uh, always we still have the technical challenge uh, connecting <laughs> across different continents, um, but uh, we will see whether we can hear from the professor later. But without further ado, I really like us to proceed. We do with the interactive panel discussion. The first panel we have two moderators. Online moderator, we have a uh, Dr. Mesfin Kefer next to on my right here. We also have a uh, on-site moderator, uh, Louis Murray. Um, Dr. Mesfin Kefer is from the Addis Ababa University, and Louis Murray is uh, from uh, London School of Economics. So, without further ado, I'll pass the floor to Dr. Mesfin, please. Uh, thank you, Wemi, for a nice introduction, and thank you all for coming here and being with us for. Uh, this forum and now the first panel part is all in uh, national data governance from silos to uh, ecosystem following a more comprehensive approach a multi-stakeholder approach a framework based approach now in this regard on this uh, first panel part we'll concentrate and focus on a few aspects of data governance which are actually uh, data standardization, data classification, data sharing, and interoperability. There are very distinguished panelists for uh, this session part. And first, 
from Ghana, Her Honorable Advenerable Lydia Lemise, she is coming actually close to us, and from Japan, Mr. Yoichi Ida, I think uh, next to the right part here, and also from UNESCO Brazil, Miss Mariliza Oliveira. She's, she's not here yet. She's not here. Yeah. Okay. At least there are, we have two di distinguished panelists from Ghana and Japan. They'll share us their uh, views and experience regarding to uh, the approach with respect to their uh, Ghanaian experience and also from Japan experience, also in international experience. Having said this, uh, uh, the online moderator also, Louis is here. I hope, can you take the floor for saying a few words? Lucy, please. Yes, absolutely. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. You may continue, please. Excellent. Um, I'm not going to take too much time, but I just wanted to present myself. I'm Louise Marie Urell. I am uh, over at the Department of Media Communications at the London School of Economics, uh, but also a, a consultant for Indesa in thinking about data security more specifically. So I think my role here as, you know, also an online moderator is potentially to trigger some thoughts around, you know, um, how to think about going from silos to ecosystem. And from that particular standpoint, uh, when we think about the rise of, um, of incidents of cyber attacks, it also leads us to a conversation about the integrity of data, of thinking about how to secure it and how to ensure that development is sustainable in a digital economy, in a digital society. So just to keep it brief, I think, you know, one of my provocations here is how can we ensure that data governance in this effort of going from silos to ecosystem, how can data actually, you know, be, uh, be not be a conversation between like, do we focus on innovation or do we prioritize security, right? How can we reconcile different agendas, different ways of viewing? development in this digital economy. But with that, I'll just uh, leave it back to the floor so we can have this fruitful conversation. Okay, th thank you, Nois, for your nice also highlight on the major uh, points that we need to uh, discuss and hear views from different panelists, district panelists. Now, uh, I hope you, uh, all the participants have seen the guiding questions that we are looking at in general, uh, framework approach, uh, all government, all society approach, and a multi-stakeholder approach, and also interlinkage between a national data governance and global data governance. Now, from uh, this point perspective, your Honorable uh, Lamisi, uh, Member of Parliament from Ghana, please take the floor and share uh, your ideas points. Thank you. Um. Thank you for this um, opportunity to share the um, little experience we have in our country. I am most honored to be part of this um, panel discussion. And what is happening in Ghana is not too different from what is actually happening in other parts of the African continent. We in Ghana has um, we have the um, um, Cyber Security Authority that is in charge of cyber security. We celebrate the, harvest, the cyber security week every year. That happens in November, the first week of November. We also have the data protection authority that has the mandate of protecting the data of every um, Ghanaian in, in, in the country. We also have um, the national um, identification authority that deals with um, data security and cyber security. Um, in Ghana, what we actually do is that we have all the enabling um, legislature um, in place. We have most of the um, infrastructure built, but our issue is about implementation. If um, what we have, if we actually go ahead to implement um, all the um, legislature that we have, I think Ghana would be one of the better place for cyber security and data protection. Um, another issue that we are looking at is the gap between urban and um, urban and rural communities, where cyber security and data protection is a challenge, all because of um, the issue of um, 
internet services. For instance, if you look at the um, actual uh, um, divide, the gap between the rural and the um, urban is about, if the rural is doing about 25%, the urban is doing about 50%. So the gap is so wide. And then when we come to gender, we look at what Ghana has, um, the, the, the gender divide in our community. For instance, if males are doing about 50% of internet, women are doing about just 20 to 35% of the internet. So maybe that is one of the challenges that we have. But Ghana is looking up to a community whereby we can interlink with other African countries. We have the same legislature that can make us work together to be able to uh, protect our country in, in the issue of cyber security and cyber crime. Though we have the, the other countries that are in the same region with us, but one of the issues about language, because most of the countries that is surrounding Ghana is about French-speaking countries, and at least most of the countries that are surrounding Ghana is they are French-speaking countries. We have Burkina Faso on the north, we have Cote d'Ivoire on to the east, and then Togo to the west. So at the end of the day, until we have a legislature that can be able to put a coordinated effort between the three or the four countries, cyber security will still be a challenge. And because of that, we are looking up to a robust, resilient legislature that will help us to be able to control the sub-region, to be able to manage cyber security activities. Because for instance, um, we have uh, um, e-commerce, e-parliament, e-business and other things. At least we do um, most of our businesses online, but at least we still need to do a lot to develop Ghana as um, a, a country and to develop the other uh, uh, African countries that are surrounding us as um, a regional um, 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 agenda. I think um, this is what I can share with you people and maybe with time, if there are other questions we can answer to be able to explain further what we are doing in Ghana. This is what we have as a small, I, I have as a small um, um, explanation for what is actually happening in Ghana. Thank you very much and we look forward to see and to talk to you later. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Lamise, sharing us your Ghanaian experience regarding to uh, national data uh, governance. Now I turn uh, for next panelist, uh, Mr. Hyochi Ida. Deputy Director General for G7 and G20 Relations. He was actually leading also the previous session. Now, regarding to uh, this silos to ecosystem, world governance, world society, and even interlinkage between national data governance and global data governance, could you share us your uh, views and opinion in this regard, please? Uh, thank you very much for the question, and uh, I, I will be brief, but uh, please, uh, 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 understand uh, what I'm explaining from now is my personal view rather than um, um, our government official views, and I'm rather in, uh, specialized in international aspect. So maybe the, my colleagues working in domestic regulation may say something different, but uh, uh, allow me to uh, speak out my own impression. And in Japan, of course, we have been uh, working uh, to very hard. Uh, to facilitate uh, data utilization and uh, uh, data uh, uh, innovation through data. Uh, but uh, 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 yes, what we have seen is, you know, people were very uh, reluctant, not very active in using data and sharing data, uh, especially uh, across uh, different sectors. So uh, that is one of the uh, 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 reasons uh, uh, when my colleagues uh, discussed national data strategy, which was uh, completed in, uh, only last year. And uh, the basic uh, uh, idea uh, is, uh, if uh, I answer the question by the first uh, panelist, uh, uh, emphasis, uh, emphasis on innovation or emphasis on security, uh, we are uh, putting uh, more emphasis on innovation and enabling environment. 
Uh, of course, uh, as the uh, concept of DFFT data free flow with trust uh, shows, without trust, uh, people do not want to use data. People do not want to share data. So we need uh, trust and we need some rule. But rule is not built up only by the regulation. We have uh, 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 trying to accumulate, accumulate the uh, good practices where the uh, uh, private sector players uh, uh, can uh, use data more freely and without concern across sectors. So uh, in, uh, our national data strategy was uh, uh, completed only last year, but we have been more active in uh, discussing uh, internationally the data strategy, uh, which I explained in other sessions. Uh, we started, we proposed a discussion uh, data flow and data uh, uh, information flow across borders uh, in the year 2016, because we thought uh, we are getting into the era of IoT or data-driven innovation, and uh, it is essentially uh, important to make best use of data, not only uh, existing domestic uh, in the domestic uh, national market, but uh, also uh, uh, data uh, from uh, beyond the borders. So uh, we promoted uh, the uh, discussion internationally, and in parallel, we were learning uh, from the discussion, international discussion in elaboration of data strategy. That is why we put the same uh, basis of concept of data free flow with trust, uh, both in our international strategy and the national data strategy. So uh, from the very beginning, uh, we believe data should be not, not blocked in the, in, inside the border and uh, uh, should flow and utilized beyond the border. So we, uh, I, I think this is a kind of uh, natural uh, way of progress. Uh, when we promoted uh, international discussion and national elaboration in, in parallel at the same time. When we talk about uh, silos, as I said, uh, we had a, a very uh, persistent uh, problem uh, in each uh, uh, priority sector, such as healthcare, medical care, uh, transport, uh, education. They have a lot of reluctance to share the data across sectors. So that is uh, our, one of the, our urgent uh, challenges. But at the same time, when we discuss policy framework or regulation, we don't think you know, the uh, transversal the horizontal regulation can be uh, achieved at this moment, the, because data uh, should have different natures uh, in different sectors, and uh, we don't pursue uh, uh, horizontal regulation across borders. Even if people say uh, silos, we, we may uh, uh, implement uh, regulation uh, pro uh, mainly on sector basis. So, uh, but uh, of, of course, this should contribute to the better flow, bit, uh, smooth. Uh, uh, operation uh, of data uh, utilization across uh, sectors. So this is uh, what uh, I'm personally thinking, and uh, I'm not quite sure my colleagues uh, fully agree to this. But uh, 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 before, uh, for the last several years, uh, uh, our government has been pursuing international discussion in parallel with national uh, 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 strategy uh, implementation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rida, for sharing us uh, your experience and opinion and view regarding to uh, uh, alignment, linkage on national data governance, uh, national, regional, and also uh, global. And also, you highlighted some basic issues that are to be taken as a concern in this regard. Now, I turn to uh, next panelist in uh, this session, uh, Mr. Maliza Oliveira from UNESCO. Director for Partnership Operational Program Monitoring, Communication and Information. She's next to me to the left. Now the floor is here. Thank you. 
Thank you. <coughs> sorry. Thank you all very much. And sorry for the rushing, you know, <laughs> going <gasps> you know, <laughs> while getting here. Um, I really wanted to be, you know, uh, here, but uh, a previous meeting ran over a little bit. Um, well, UNESCO is the agency tasked uh, with uh, the issues of freedom of expression and access to information, privacy, and that has a lot to do with data, you know, of course. Um, access to information is essentially access to the vast stores of digital uh, data and information available over the internet, and uh, which has been empowering, empowering digital transformation, including through uh, new technologies such as artificial intelligence. I, I always joke that artificial intelligence is essentially has two components: talent and data, and uh, you know, and, and that's essentially what the, all emerging technologies work with. Um, and data is ex actually, you know, the element that uh, enables us to derive socioeconomic value you know, of, as individuals, as communities, as societies, from uh, the uh, uh, vast stores of information available on the internet. Um, so this is the building capacities and enabling access without break, you know, uh, without uh, uh, um, um, any, any uh, interruption for data to, to data is something that we really champion. Um, Many, in many places, uh, we are seeing uh, the rise of, uh, of uh, and, and the interest of, uh, of uh, national systems to regulate and to, and to um, uh, put forward um, um, frameworks that enable uh, full access to information um, and in this aspect. And uh, in terms of information loss, currently we have about 160 countries around the world that actually, sorry, 140 countries around the world that have uh, information loss, particularly for public information. This is really essential, uh, but not sufficient for uh, the elements of data. Uh, and, it's and it's essential, essential because, you know, what we do with the data flows that we, the data availability, the information that we have available on the internet is um, to empower, empower digital innovation, as we say, but we need to put the right frameworks for protection also of uh, privacy and the, against you know, different types of biases on, on data sets that may exist. Um, so one of the things that UNESCO is doing right now uh, is uh, providing, you know, uh, debating and finalizing guidelines uh, for uh, access to public data uh, to be provided to governments at the global level so that we can inspire uh, the uh, uh, regulatory frameworks at national level that enable us to really derive the benefits that uh, enable us to realize the right to education because we have education data available, the right to justice because we have the justice data available, the right you know, to health uh, because we have health data available without you know, impacting negatively on, you know, the protections that we need, you know, particularly to vulnerable groups that tend to be excluded by data collection systems simply because, first, they're not present on the internet, the second, they're not present in sufficient numbers or uh, um, in sufficient, uh, uh, with sufficient intensity because they don't have uh, the right data package, you know, affordability and so on and so forth. So uh, some of the guidance, let me just very quickly read for, you, for you some of the elements, elements that, that, that come. come. Pr principles for the right to access to information. You know, we're looking at maximum disclosure that makes access to information and data applicable to all public bodies to the widest extent possible and restricted only in the very limited circumstances. Decision makers should always proceed from a presumption in favor of disclosure without asking individuals to demonstrate particular interest in information or explain the reason for the request. The duty to publish proactive disclosure that obliges public bodies to disseminate widely information and documents of significant public interest, uh, even without prior request. The, the benefit is that publishing information will often be more economical than responding to multiple requests for the same information. Processes to ac facilitate access, stating that the request for information should be processed rapidly and fairly, an independent review of refusals should be available. This requires that simply uh, simple, clear procedures be established to guide how public bodies deal with requests and how citizens can access information. Costs protecting individuals from being deterred to make requests for information by ex excessive costs, even if their provision does have a cost implication for public bodies. 
right to appeal, allowing to have recourse to an independent body to review decisions made by public authorities, uh, and the right is, mo is already reflected in most international standards and represents a real lever to wider information disclosure, especially when revealing cor uh, uh, corruption of incompetence. The appeals process should provide an avenue for inquiry and pro complaints should provide a procedure to raise issues about public entity publication and access decisions. Limited scope of exceptions, requiring the exceptions withholding information from citizens should be clear, well-founded in law and narrowly defined. Promotion of open government, aiming at changing culture of secrecy within public bodies and protection of whistleblower who release information of wrongdoing. Those are elements that are part of that and uh, uh, of uh, uh, principles of standards and the guidelines will, you know, clarify how we go about, you know, ensuring that uh, the information ecosystem is fertilized by reliable public information f that is available for all to empower innovation and empower citizens um, to uh, um, uh, work uh, with public services uh, more fairly, more closely and, and more efficiently. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Olivera, sharing as uh, UNESCO's views and perspective regarding to uh, data governance and the need the UNESCO is demanding and also the basic principles. Uh, thank you again. Now, uh, I hand over the moderation for Dennis for the next second uh, panel discussion. Please, Dennis, take the floor. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dennis Sar. I am also working at the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. I know we are running out of time and uh, the second panel members uh, must be worried that they have less time <laughs> to speak. Mm -hmm. So without giving any further ado, I will just pass to the first speaker. Uh, but before that, let's just remember that in the Global Digital Compact that the SG uh, proposed in the Common Agenda, the third action point uh, is protect data. So this uh, will come uh, it will come more and more in the international agenda. Uh, so my first speaker is Mr. Mansarai Salu, technical yes. advisor to the vice president at government of Sierra Leone. The floor is yours and please respect the time with <laughs> okay. three minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I'll try to keep it short. Um, uh, I was former, former advisor. Um, the issue of uh, protection is very much important because if we take into account what other jurisdictions are doing, more so with Europe, with the GDPR, um, it has now become a norm that uh, even companies in those in uh, uh, operating in Europe or whose um, uh, businesses have access to European data have to abide by GDPR rules. And uh, I think we have to look at how we can make that universal to ensure that data is protected um, right across globally. Because, for example, if companies now want to interact globally, they have to meet certain standards. It's called third-party governance. So we have to ask the question, why couldn't that be done between citizens and their governments? to ensure that before I give you my data, I need to be, um, I need to have a document that says all your systems are protected and that my data will be protected. So we have to look at the issue of compliance, the issue of setting standards. For example, there is the ISO 27001, which companies have to comply by. We should set such a standard for government so that I can feel comfortable with giving you my data. So uh, keeping it uh, within the 30 minutes I've been given, is it 30 minutes or three minutes? Three minutes, okay, thanks very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that valuable input. Uh, and now I'll turn to my uh, colleague, Ms. Mariam Jobe, Program and Engagement Manager, Give One Project Gambia, and also Secretariat Assistant to African IGF. Um, good morning. My name is Madame Job. Thank you for that introduction. And since we're running out of time, I'm going to be as precise and short as possible. Mr. Yoshi here mentioned something about the fact that people do not want to give their data. And that's uh, often more often than not. It's because there is little or no transparency. And in the African region, really, it's because there's very little security. Uh, there's a lot of data harvesting in Africa. I know that in the West region, the ECOWAS, when you're going for uh, your ID card or your passport, there's a biometric system. In the Gambia, for instance, it's 
been out the contractor is outsourced <laughs> and you will get asked you are asked questions regarding your parents where they live where they come from their telephone number and all of that just to get your ID card so there's a lot of data harvesting but people don't know where their data is going who is storing it how is it being stored and when we talk about the importance of data privacy and data protection you have to talk about data ethics fairness such that collected data should be used with purpose in ways that don't violate their individual human rights privacy and protection where big data has personal and oftentimes very sensitive data and we need to ensure that privacy is their privacy is safeguarded and consent of the individual whose data is being used and this takes us to transparency that people know that their data is being collected why it is being collected and for what reasons and um, along with the knowledge that they can trust you that you protect their data so am i on Check. <laughs> yes. 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 Definitely. I think. Oh, actually, before yeah, we go, just mm -hmm. I have some time, right? You have time. Recently, also, we're talking about data privacy, and I want to t come to by cybersecurity as well. Just recently, in the Gambia, we had a massive hacking against the entire system of the Central Bank of the Gambia, and the hackers now have access to about two gigabytes of vital information that has that you know could affect personal finances of most gambians and they have accurate figures of the economy and the state of affairs in the gambia so data ethics is very important when you're talking about this and you need to have really when you're talking about governing data you need to have cyber security experts or at least cyber security measures put in place at national level as well thank you thank you so much uh let me now turn to miss lily edinam botse from Ghana Youth IGF, and after, yes, and yeah. right. af thank you, thank you, and after that we will get some reflections from our online moderator, and in the meantime, if there are any questions, please feel free to put in the chat, or if uh, we will see if we have time from the floor. So, right, hi everyone, my name is Lily Edinamboche, and I coordinate the Ghana Youth Internet Governance Forum, and I feel like um, a good foundation has been laid for me for the discussion around cybersecurity because the Honorable Minister from Ghana has shared um, in perspective what it is like in Ghana. And so just to move on and piggyback on what Mariam has shared, essentially when we talk about cybersecurity, um, it, 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 it has its roots pretty much um, grounded in development because we run now on technology to be able to accelerate development for our African region and Ghana even as a country. So um, talking about the issue of cybersecurity in line with what we have now or what you're discussing as a framework for just moving what you have in silos or um, just processing of data in silos now to, ecosystem, to, the, to an ecosystem approach. It looks more at how we can trust the process when it comes to how data is gathered, um, is used, is stored, or essentially who has access to it. So for example, when we talk about cybersecurity, for us young people who are active users of the internet, it behoves on um, what we do for even a living because most of us work online and most of us are also school. So it's of importance to us because you're wondering beyond getting online, how are you protected? And the trust you have in systems so that you, you, you do not have breaches and essentially um, run at maybe a loss if you're running a business or probably your information is out there for who knows what. Now, if you're thinking about silos and probably thinking about the, the context of what it is like in Ghana for young people, we have, like Mariam described, going to um, apply for maybe a driver's license, you gather data there, going to apply for maybe a passport, you gather data, going to apply for maybe a health card or something, you gather data. All these places are collecting data and you want to, you want to, um, we want, we, you want to think about who is there a centralized place where it goes to? Why aren't there, why aren't we, um, why is it that we, every, every time we, we ask for the same data and for what reason? And even if there was a way to protect it, are we, are we sure that all the departments collecting the, this data are adhering to what um, we essentially wanted to be, um, want um, data to be treated like? And then we come to the issue of privacy because um, we, we heard that there's a, a data protection authority in Ghana, which has, um, asks that companies working with data should say what it is that they are using the data for. And under the broad context of just protecting people's privacy, um, in answering what you want to do as a framework, if you want to move from what you have silo, as silos now to the framework, I feel like this strategy or the framework is pretty much important. GDPR has set a good, sto a, a good um, I mean, example for us, we're able to scale this up and to be helpful for us to see how this would look like in a global space because of how we 
from time to time um, engage not only at national level but also at the continental and global level so essentially it's um, as a matter of moving forward um, in a way that is helpful for us humans who are the center of um, technology and without that policy and strategy we we'll only be reinforces uh, we we'll only be reinforcing the injustices and biases that are on the offline world so this is helpful for us to create good cyberspace for I mean development and for the work that we all do thank you thank you Thank you, Lily. Uh, I will I will turn to uh, our online moderator now, Louise Marie, uh, to summarize some of the key points. But at the same time, uh, if there are any urgent questions, uh, please uh, raise your hand so that I can see you. And I think we will have time maybe for two questions. Louise, the floor is yours, and then I will turn to the floor. Perfect. Thank you very much. It has been a quite enriching discussion and I thank all the panelists for bringing uh, their own perspectives. I think if I had to cluster everything that we've heard so far into three points, I think we're talking about processes and institutionalization on how to better structure, you know, responses from a government level to tackling digital innovation you know, making different countries actually harness the power of data while at the same time considering the challenge that emerged from that process. So just in this conversation that we have right now in process and institutionalization, some of the elements that we discussed included guidance and uh, we heard that from the UNESCO representative. We heard about best practices from government representatives. We we talked about legislation in different countries. Uh, we heard about Cambodia's experience as well in that sense and other countries as well. And we also talked about digital transformation strategies and how data governance kind of fits into that, right? The second element that we've heard a lot over here was the notion of inequalities, right? When we're thinking about getting to a stage where digital transformation is achievable and where countries actually have in place a data governance framework, we're talking about tackling the specificities of inequalities that are already present in a particular countries and contexts, right? So that includes, and we heard over here, considering the sensitivities around how to not just ensure that access and data governance and harnessing the power of data is something that's in the city but that is also part of the rural areas so how do we connect rural uh, rural and um, urban divides, right? How do we tackle also, like, how do we promote a gender sensitive lens, right? Some parts of the population might benefit more from uh, the power of data because sometimes they are, there is more data about them. Or how do we tackle, as it was previously said, also challenges around biases because the data sets that we're normally using and how government structure data sets has something very powerful to say about the outputs, right? What are the kinds of outputs that governments are having in order to actually promote other services to the population? Are these different um, data sets actually reflective of the population? Is it necessary to curate them in a better way and to facilitate the access to that data? So processes and institutionalization, how to tackle that from a an institutional model, right? What's the government view on how to tackle this? Is it better to do a legislation, a toolbox, a guidance, how to combine these different levels? The second, inequalities, how do we navigate that? And the third, just to close my brief remark, is how to think about trust uh, privacy and security as part of the same, uh, as different dimensions of the same coin, right? Um, I remember one of the representatives, I think it was from uh, Japan, mentions that, you know, we might have focused more on innovation, but we understand that trust is the bedrock for achieving um, data governance and achieving digital transformation at the end of the day. Because if you have a population that doesn't trust technology, doesn't trust the data that's being used, then you have a fundamental problem of actually having everyone together believing that being connected and being online is actually something that's useful for them as individuals as well. Um, so trust is part of the, the Louis, equation, uh, even if... I need yeah. to interrupt you because we are running yes. out of time. So just final Absolutely. Conclusion. No, that's fine. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think on the security side is thinking that security is part of development. It's not something that actually hinders development, but that it's actually about achieving and building that trust as well. 
Luis, uh, thank you so much. I think that was an excellent uh, summary of the overall discussion. So I think it, it will only uh, be fair if we get one or two questions from the floor. Yeah, please. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Florian Marcus. I'm an e-government consultant uh, from, from Estonia. Um, I'll, I'll keep it very short. In my opinion, uh, e, an e -gov or a data govern governance framework should be uh, about improving data quality should be about uh, strengthening data interoperability, so exchange between different stakeholders, and also about the security and ideally minimization. Um, in our experience in Estonia and elsewhere, uh, what's very a very strong component is the once-only policy, meaning that across government authorities there's always only one agency that holds a particular data subset. A very simple question, do the different countries represented here uh, have something like that planned? Is that somewhere in the policy framework for them? Thank you so much. Thank you for that question. Uh, is there any other burning question uh, from the floor? I don't see any. I, I think we can give one chance to all panelists who would like to respond to this. But before we conclude as well, I, I also want to remind everyone that the panelists are here. You can come and get their business cards. So anyone uh, wants to respond to this question? Yeah. Um, thank you very much for the question. I just want to share um, some few instances in Ghana, for instance, when we are looking at data protection and, data and privacy, uh, it is actually a problem because if the data is in a particular organization, it's very easy to protect it. But if we are sharing data in so many to, in, within so many organizations in the country, for instance, we are sharing data uh, from the driver's license office to the passport office to private agencies, it will be difficult for you to keep the privacy. So there is an enabling environment or enabling legislation in our country that makes sure that whatever data that is put there is protected so that everybody has a privacy onto his or her data so that you don't end up by losing the data or the privacy of individuals into the, uh, um, the, the system where we have um, um, cyber uh, criminals or cyber security issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, please. Yes. Um, I think the issue of um, uh, privacy and also what governments can do is, is, is a two-way thing. I think the discussion has got to be between the citizens and the government in terms of what is protected, how it's protected, and where it's protected. And I think there should also be an issue of sanctions. It cannot just be open-ended. There should be sanctions. With the GDPR, you know it's 4% of uh, turnover. But I'm not sure whether 4% of any government's turnover can be a fine. Thank you. Excuse Thank me, you there very is, much. There is a question from uh, uh, online. OK. Yeah, let's take that. But I don't some change, Adam. Yeah, Mr. Sok. Oh, hi, yes. I think you uh, would just, like uh, to respond, right? Yeah. Um, not really to respond, but yeah, concerning what I was asking uh, from Estonia, yes, uh, Cambodia have, uh, have, have this policy, once and only uh, principle, yes. Um, and actually, we are piloting some extra from Estonia as well, and uh, 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 yeah, and I think so far we're exploring uh, more pilots in terms of uh, how best to um, you know, build this trust uh, that we were talking about here. I think at the, at the uh, the essence of all this uh, digital transformation is trust. And you know, the uh, emerging ideas that I wanted to ask is uh, from the opinion of the uh, panel and, 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 the, and the board here at the meeting here, and me, especially specifically addressing uh, to uh, Ms. Louis Marie, uh, uh, what she mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, at, at the moment, you know, digital transformation with the new, uh, what we've seen around the world, uh, there's a lot of costs. Uh, attached to just uh, uh, protection and security, and we keep on patching. Uh, you know, it never really solves uh, the issue. Uh, there are new emerging ideas. Uh, I don't know Web 3.0 or other ideas. I don't know um, a more distributed uh, model. Uh, are these something that government uh, need to be need to pay attention to? Uh, and you know, as, as as default from what we've seen in countries like Estonia, and Korea, Singapore. Uh, are these, you know, the current standard 
you know, I mean, beyond the, we're, we're actually, this by default, we're, we, uh, and studying and uh, with support from uh, bilateral support and from development partner support, uh, we, we're moving in that direction. Uh, but we're just thinking ahead, uh, you know, looking ahead, and are there things that government should be, you know, uh, on top of what they're doing now, uh, look a bit further in terms of preparing what's, uh, what's to come in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, His Excellency Mr. Sok, for that uh, contribution. Uh, I think with that, uh, we can uh, conclude our session here. In this room, there will be more data governance related sessions, so you can continue to follow those here. And let's get a round of applause for uh, Mr. Wyman Kvok, who organized this session, and also for all the speakers.